number seven. This is my question. Um, if elected, will you continue to support uh, districting if the law allows for non-districting? Okay, and if you do support districting, how does uh, districting allow you to support all the students of the, of the district and not of just your particular district? Mr. Peralta? Sorry. <laughs> from what I've heard in comments from in visiting now in the community, I think that most people would like to see districting go away. I don't know that that can happen. <laughs> but I would support it if, if that's what it is, because I think that's what the community wants. Uh, if districting has to stay, then I, I think that the individual who's, who get on the school board's responsibility is to all the students and not the district. Uh, that's your responsibility no matter what you get involved in as a representative of the community. You represent the community, not just a section that may have elected you. Um, and so that's, that's where you need to go. You say, look, districting is over. Now it's our responsibility to ensure that everyone gets a, an equal opportunity at an education. District, uh, districts are a pretty complicated thing, the districting. Uh, it was done in order to try to get equal representation throughout uh, the, the area here. And uh, if we were to get rid of it, it seems to me like the concentration of the people who live around the town area would have the biggest uh, uh, representation on the board, which is not really bad. It, it's, it's sort of a toss-up. Uh, once you're on the board, you work for the students. That's the main thing. We have to keep in mind that this is all about the students. And um, therefore, I, I, I can understand why the districts were formed, so that people in the ranchos area and the northern uh, part of the, uh, the uh, communities, uh, uh, such as Arroyo Seco and so forth, would feel that they had a voice in our educational system. It, uh, it's really a toss-up. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, to me, districting doesn't make sense, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to a school district like Taos. But <clears throat> I think we're stuck with it. I mean, it's a, it's a statute, and it's required uh, depending on the population of the district, and I think we're well above that population. So unless there's a legislative change, um, I don't think it's going to change. Uh, but I think this year's panel provides a really good example of why it wouldn't be bad if it went away, because you'd be electing the three best candidates from this panel, um, uh, and you wouldn't have to kind of pick and choose uh, based on other reasons. Uh, and I think there's a real uh, value in that. Um, I think that answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I feel it has to go away for the reasons of this, as we talked about throughout our community, is engaging people. This is one of the reasons for engaging people is giving them the option to vote. People can't vote because, you know, they're out of district. It goes in, in, in different cycles. So at this point, if you take it away, everybody has a voice. You know, we can eliminate that 8% turnout that votes for our school board election with something that is real vital to our community is our is school board. And it's something that nobody participates in because they don't know where to vote and they can't, they don't know how to vote because they don't know which district they're in and they don't know if they have a voice for it. But that's one way to eliminate and that's one way to get people engaged and give them a voice in our community. I'd like to see a partial change to the system. I think having districts for uh, where, where the individual candidates come from is a good thing because it forces the candidates to be spread out amongst the community. But I think all voters should be able to vote in all districts so that you would vote for a candidate from each of the, each of the districts. 
And so that will give the whole community a, a choice on all the board members. Thank you. When you listen to the community, these are some of the concerns that I've come up with that I've heard from our community members. And uh, my personal opinion is I wouldn't support the district. Uh, that's setting up barriers amongst our parents and our teachers and our different schools in the community. It's isolation at its finest right there. But uh, I think uh, if it's state rule, then we go with it. We follow the rules. But the bottom line is this, that we need to support across the board all our children for a better education. Bottom line. Thank you. Well, um, unfortunately, it can be changed. I'll tr believe the lawyer in the room and uh, go with the statute. However, if uh, that statute was not the case, I would certainly support uh, the doing away with districts. I think that it's absolutely important that every single person within the boundaries of the Towson Municipal School Board be able to vote in it because we deal with their money to have districts, and especially in such a small community, it really is um, sort of nonsensical. However, um, I think there are ways that we can perhaps look at maybe lobbying the state legislature to get them to change that law, and if, uh, that's, a real if that's a possibility, um, I'll certainly work to make it a reality. I'll answer your question uh, this way. Uh, recently, I uh, met, uh, visited uh, with Mr. Cadio Valerio from uh, Los Cordovas, another one of our distinguished educators. And one of the comments uh, uh, he made to me was that, uh, well, this year, you know, I, I cannot participate. I can't vote because, you know, there's no one running in my district. So I think uh, that's the primary reason you know we, we can't all participate and therefore it's something that uh, would benefit us benefit is all that's the greatest benefit that I think thank you uh, this is actually a very difficult question because like Jean said there was a reason for the districting to be put in place to begin with so if we were to go forward and, and dissolve that, would those issues and concerns just come up later? Um, so it seems to be cyclical to me. It seems like you know we get to a point and then we realize that we don't like it and we want to change back. So what is the real issue? The real issue is can we come together as a school board to support all of our students? That's what we really need to ask. Whether any of the district uh, board members whether they're from any different district or not, that we need to have that policy in place, which I don't believe it is on our charter, that says no matter what district you're from, that you're going to support, once you've been elected, support all of the students. We need to do that for our community as a whole. Um, all the community needs to know that we're there to support everyone, not just our own district. Currently, the way I feel about it right now is it is what it is. Um, it's not going to change overnight. But if there are family members and community members that are upset because they can't participate, they can participate. They're just being lazy about it. They could let their neighbors know. They could let their cousins know. They could let their nieces and nephews that live somewhere else know and be involved. That's what needs to happen is the community involvement, not just, oh, I can't. Yes, you can do something about it, and you can have a voice still. Thank you. By the way, if you don't know what district you're in, we do have district maps out at the front door, uh, and they are provided by Yes for Kids.